Thank you, Chair Youngblood. It is my uh, pleasure to recognize uh, today uh, Representative Chris Kennedy. Representative Kennedy is, uh, represents a district in South Oklahoma City. Uh, he has, uh, uh, he's also a practicing attorney here in South Oklahoma City. And I want to uh, let the board and the audience know that uh, Representative Kennedy has been very helpful uh, to Oklahoma City Community College on multiple occasions. And often, uh, in fact, most of the time, his, his assistance is behind the scenes and quiet and is not something that we uh, give a lot of notoriety to sometime. But I wanted to uh, invite him to the meeting and, and let the board say thank you to him for his work, uh, even though it's often not in the newspapers and it's uh, often not well known, but uh, Representative Kennedy has been a friend of Oklahoma City Community College uh, on, the, on the, the budget bills and other bills as well. And he has uh, always, uh, every time I've gone to see him, always been receptive to try to help us. And uh, ev even uh, a time or two when we didn't, uh, we didn't have uh, quite the same opinion, I always felt welcome uh, talking with Representative Kennedy. I always felt uh, like he listened to me and understood our position. And, and I always felt welcome in returning the next day if I need to talk to him about something else. So he has been not only a friend to me personally, but a friend to Oklahoma City Community College, uh, the Board of Regents, uh, and most importantly, a friend to our students. So please welcome Representative Chris Kennedy. <laughs> Well, President Stewart, Board of Regents, I, I appreciate the inv invitation. It's kind of, I know it's kind of bizarre. Most everyone's behind me, but uh, I will tell you that uh, if I'm still in office when it comes time for the census, I'm going to try my best to steal OCCC back from, from Lear Eccles. He took it away, uh, <laughs> you know, last time. And my, my district runs 89th, and, and the, the at, this physical location at one time was in my district before I was elected. Uh, but I, I cherish this institution. I, I treat it as, as an institution that is within my district, and as President Stewart knows, I, I, I think the world of what goes on here, and a lot of it has to do with his leadership and your leadership as to the successes that have happened here and continue to happen. And when we are out and about amongst, uh, you know, 23rd and Lincoln and other places, President Stewart will tell you that I always champion uh, OCCC because I can, because it, it's always a leader in, in whatever it may be uh, from an education standpoint, from a campus safety standpoint, things of that nature. And I know many of you personally, so uh, I don't want to talk too much. Uh, I will tell you this, uh, there was a time I believe in the past few years where you probably felt that there wasn't as much support on the higher education realm in the legislature. And I will tell you that that has changed drastically. And I know with President Stewart being out at the the capital, he's seen it. But what I will tell you is this, as we go into a, a topsy-turvy election cycle where we usually have 35, 40 races, we have 86 House races. We have 51 Republican primaries a week from tomorrow. And what the landscape will look like is before a single vote is cast, we'll have 31 new members in the State House. And we just know that for certain because those who decide not to run again, those who term out, those who moved on to other things. And when you go through 16 months of session, uh, you can wonder why uh, many of us are, 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 are not sticking with it. And there's some of us like me who are crazy uh, who, who still put their name on the ballot. But what that means is, is that when we walk into the State House of Representatives next session or sworn in, about 80 members will have two years or less experience out of 101. That's a big deal. And so I tell you that, number one, to... You know, pay attention to those who are still there that uh, understand what's going on, understand higher education, but also build and foster relationships with all these new people that are going to come in. Because although I understand what happens here, they don't. And they're going to be new to the game. And as much as you get on the campaign trail and talk about your positions and where you are, it's a completely different, bless you, it's a completely different ball game when you get to uh, 23rd in Lincoln. So I appreciate the invitation, uh, President Stewart, and uh, look forward to working with all of you in, in upcoming session 
if I get reelected on the 26th of June and then in November. Uh, so, but I do appreciate the, the opportunity to come, come say a few brief words. Uh, now I'd like to recognize a, a donor to Oklahoma City Community College. Today I am honored to introduce uh, you to the extraordinary family of Mr. Ralph Gamel. The Gamble family made the largest ever individual contribution to the college in 2014 from Ms. Mr. Gamble's estate after he passed away in December 2013. This is the story of a man with a generous heart, a keen understanding of how education changes lives, and a legacy continued today by his second family. Ralph Gamble was born in September 1923 in Crum, Texas to parents who raised five children through the Great Depression. His father, Carl, was an auto mechanic and his mother, Myrtle, cleaned houses and took in laundry to help make ends meet. It was this hard scrabble upbringing that laid the foundation for his lifelong philosophy of working hard, caring for others, and seeking the advantages that education could provide. While still a boy, Ralph and his family moved from Texas to Oklahoma. In 1942, he joined the United States Army Air Force, serving as a navigator before he was accepted into officer candidate school. During World War II, he saw action as an officer in the infantry in the South Pacific. Later, he served in the Korean War, retiring as a captain in 1953. Upon his return home to Oklahoma City after the service, his desire to make a difference led to a brief stint with the Oklahoma City Police Department, where Regent White, he walked a beat in Capitol Hill. It didn't, it didn't take long for him to trade in his badge for a position as an administrator with what would become the Federal Aviation Administration in Oklahoma City. After he retired from the FAA, uh, Ralph began his next chapter by working in the oil and gas business, and he founded East Oak Oil Company it was in the oil business that he enjoyed his greatest financial success, <coughs> earning enough money to eventually own three ranches, take care of his family, and very importantly, began supporting young people at Oklahoma City Community College with scholarships. While Ralph enjoyed three successful careers in the military, at the FAA, and in the oil business, he was fortunate enough to love and be loved by two great women. His first wife, Jean, passed away in 2006 after nearly 60 years of marriage. Jean had not been able to pursue higher education, and it was Ralph's desire to honor her memory with the endowed scholarship program at OCCC. After Jean's death, Ralph married Connie Camp. She had been married to her husband, Monty, for 39 years until he passed away. The two couples had attended the same church and it was a blessing for both when Ralph and Connie <coughs> found love again. They were married for just shy of six years before Ralph's death in 2013 at the age of 90. Today, Connie Gamble and her daughter Jan Clark continue Ralph's passion for helping students. They speak lovingly of Ralph's poor upbringing, his great love for others, and his belief that education provides an opportunity for a better life and they continue to share that philosophy. Ralph honored his first love, Gene, by establishing the endowment, and his second love, Connie, continues that legacy today. Since the Gamble family has begun making gifts for scholarships, 296 OCCC students have benefited from a Gamble scholarship. <laughs> And those numbers will only continue to grow. I am pleased that the endowment will double in the future upon the realization of another estate gift from the trust that Ralph established. I would like to introduce Ms. Connie Gamble and her daughter Jan Clark, both of Norman. Would you please stand to be recognized?
Mrs. Gamble, would you join me at the podium, please? Jan, you want to come with her? Julie, you want to come on the other side? <laughs> Connie, we want to thank you. We are so appreciative of the kindness and generosity that continues to support students who have a dream of a better life. We are grateful that you and Jan continue to honor Ralph's legacy through the students you help at OCCC. On behalf of the Board of Regents, the faculty and staff, and especially our students, thank you. I have a memento to present to you and Jan, and we'd like to take a photograph. This is a memento presented to Ms. Gam. I'm going to take it up so the board can see it a little <laughs> <Okay>. better. <laughs> honor of Ralph Gamble and Connie Gamble that we'd like to present. I'll show it to the audience. We'd like to present one of these to you. I'll hold it for you so okay. you don't have to, to bear the weight oh, of it. I love that. Oh, that's and wonderful. there's uh, Jan. There's one for you as well that's oh, identical you. to this. Thank you so, so we'd much. like to present this to you today from a grateful college mm -hmm. and most importantly our grateful students. And before I uh, conclude my remarks and ask uh, Connie if she has anything she'd like to say, I would also like to uh, recognize and say thank you to <coughs> Professor Julie Korf, who has been a good friend of the Gamels mm -hmm. for many years and has been a great uh, assistance to the college and um, uh, in making this gift occur and chairs the scholarship committee uh, that that recommends the award of these scholarships so julie thank you as well mm -hmm. and I, I once again i'll state that uh, ralph and connie gamble have provided the from an individual contributor the largest single gift in the history of Oklahoma City Community College. Connie, would you like to say a word? Just a word. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you. I'd like to thank you for all you've done for the college since you've been here. Thank you. And for our state, too. I know you've done a lot for them. Thank you. And I'd like to thank Julie and some of the people that are on the selection committee. They've done an outstanding job in picking the right students to receive the awards. I'd like to take thank Vaughn Allen for his putting up with us. Chauffeuring. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just, Ralph was a wonderful man. He just, he, uh, one story I'd like to tell you about, he always wanted to help students and we'd eat out quite a bit. And one day we were having lunch and a waitress came up and he talked to everybody. But he talked to this girl and she talked about how she was working and going to college. And before I knew it, he was starting to offer her a scholarship to go to college. I thought, Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he wanted to pay her tuition. Yeah, but yeah. He, was, he was a great husband and a great, great man. And I really, yeah, great. Thank and he you. would be very happy to know what has tra transpired. Well, we honor him here today and uh, he has, uh, he has created the legacy for, for himself, for his first wife, for you, Connie, and, and for all people that care about providing education for students. And uh, he, his legacy and yours will live on in perpetuity uh, because of his generosity and his thoughtfulness in providing educational opportunities. So we appreciate it. Jan, is there anything you'd like to add? I'd like to say one more thing. Okay. Um, his first wife, Jean, didn't have an opportunity to go to school, and that's the reason this was created in the first place, was to honor her because she didn't get to go to college, so. I well, that was, a, that was a marvelous thing for him to do, so we, we honor Jean as well as you and Ralph today, and uh, this is in her memory as well, yes. and uh, I, I believe that he and she would be pleased that you're here today uh, and uh, receiving our thank you. Okay, thank you. Jan, you? <laughs> You're good. She said it all. Okay. <laughs> I can blubber about how much I loved him, but. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank, thank you so you. much. May I continue, Chair Young? Please do. We're on a roll. This is good. <laughs> Seems like anything else is anticlimactic almost after, wow. after uh, uh, Connie. You know, at the, at the last uh, meeting of uh, the board, I mentioned that there are so many people behind the scenes that uh, help make 
commencement a success mm -hmm. and we rarely get to see them or hear their names and so I wanted to honor them by recognition a recognition at a board meeting you may recall last month I uh, uh, recognized the members of the president's office uh, with the exception of Dr. Sugar who's here today and we'll be recognizing her but but I'd like to call on the uh, the cabinet members in several areas uh, to recognize their employees who make the commencement that you all attend such a success uh, I can tell you this there's about a thousand moving parts to commencement and uh, and uh, Paige is I would say the uh, uh, is the uh, Conductor. The conductor, but there are many other people involved, and so uh, Rochelle, uh, this is her second, isn't that right, Rochelle? The second, so it's a, it's a, it's a big operation. It's complicated, mm -hmm. and there are so many people that have uh, a part in it that I wanted to recognize them. So, Mr. Rob Greggs, the acting vice president for Information mm -hmm. and Structural Technology Services, would you please come forward and recognize those members of your staff who could be with us today? That, uh, that helped make commencement a success. Sure, uh, President Stewart, uh, Chair Youngblood, Board of Regents, it's a pleasure to talk to you today. And we have a lot of great people in IITS, uh, three team members who are very influential and critical to the success of our commencement operations are Tim Wisenhunt, Director of Technology Support Services. He's here every board meeting as well, making sure all of our stuff goes off well. He oversees the operations technically uh, at commencement, Mike Bates. Video broadcast engineer Mike oversees all of the streaming media services, ensuring that anybody who wants to watch commencement can actually watch it online. And then Ben Rodriguez, in charge of all the digital signage for the event. So we appreciate their participation, all their work for this event. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chris Snow is executive director of facilities management. Uh, would you come forward and recognize those members of the facilities management staff that assisted the commencement who could be with us today? Chair Youngblood, Regents, President Stewart, thank you. It's my honor to represent facilities management employees who physically supported the setup and teardown of the commencement ceremony. Mr. Kevin Brannon, Mr. Dale Phillips, Mr. Rick Cowan, Ms. Kari Hunter, Mr. Taylor Fields, Mr. Robert Bolsler, Mr. Nicholas Durbin, and Mr. Michael Mont. Uh, Mr. Cordell Jordan is the, the Executive Director of Marketing and Public Relations. Would you please come forward and recognize those members of your staff who could be here today that had a, a part in commencement? Yes, Chair Youngblood, President Stewart, Board of Regents. Uh, my staff does a lot of things leading up to and then following uh, commencement each year. Uh, we do a lot of promotions. Um, also, um, someone who is at every Board of Regents meeting in the very back is Jill Robertson, our public relations specialist. With the emerging technology, she's responsible for all of the social media promotion and uh, including promotion of live tweets and Facebook posts during the event. As well, uh, Mr. Anderson, Dan Anderson, is with video services and uh, has done a lot for, he, he and his staff have done a lot for promotions. Uh, all of marketing and public relations, as well as printing services, uh, we print the commencement programs in-house um, and our video services are very instrumental. As President Stewart said, there are a lot of moving parts and, and a lot of them fall under marketing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> chief Dan Piazza, our chief of campus police, is off campus today on a well-earned vacation with his family. In his place, Lieutenant Tipton is here to introduce those uh, persons uh, with the campus police department who are uh, directly engaged in the commencement ceremony. Lieutenant Tipton, thank you for being with us. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chair Youngblood, Regents, President Stewart, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, give recognition to our officers that were uh, on site at the commencement ceremony. Uh, we have several that, were, uh, that weren't able to be here today, but the ones that are, uh, I'll go ahead and list their names, they'll stand. Um, of course, our officer in charge was Chief Dan Piazza. Uh, myself was there. Uh, we had Officer James Abernathy, uh, Officer Jimmy Watts, Officer Andrew Schmidt, 
uh, Task Force Officer Brandon Davis, <coughs> Officer Jerry Van Winkle, uh, Sergeant Dave Madden, Officer Brian Hansbro, Officer Kevin Johnson, and Reserve Officer Charles Wilson. And as I mentioned uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning of this segment of the uh, report, uh, Dr. Marlene Sugar was not uh, present last uh, uh, time at the board meeting, last month at the board meeting. Let us recognize you. She's part of the president's office staff that is integrally involved in planning commencement. So thank you. <laughs> and uh, to each of you that, that are involved in the commencement, um, it, it would not work without you. I know I speak for the board when I say thank you again for making uh, commencement so successful. Uh, those of us who work with you know how difficult it is and know the extra hours you put in to, to make it work. So thank you again. The next item on the president's report is the introduction of new employees. Dr. Schweitzer, would you please introduce our new employees? Chair Young, Blood Regents, and President Stewart, it's my privilege to introduce the new employees for this month. So as I call your name, if you would stand. And then we'll hold our applause until the end. Nicholas Durbin is the Building Services Assistant in Building Services. Jeff Chagru is the Employee Benefits Specialist in Human Resources. And Gerardo Thompson, the Assistant to the Director of Academic Advising in the Office of Academic Advising. So welcome. <laughs> To, to the new employees, I wish you a long and mutually beneficial relationship with the college as you uh, perform your duties uh, for the uh, best community college in the state of Oklahoma. The next and last item on the, hire, on the president's report is the higher education issues update. Probably the, mo the issue that's most relevant to this board uh, at the present time is the current status of the challenge to the petition that uh, seeks to repeal the revenue raising measures that were passed in support of the uh, uh, salary increases for uh, K through 12 teachers, career tech teachers, and other state employees. Unfortunately, for that purpose, community college employees were not considered state employees and did not receive uh, an increase uh, as a result of the um, increased revenue. The Supreme Court revenue uh, referee has conducted a hearing, and at the hearing, uh, which was to challenge the, uh, in effect, the explanation that was on the ballot uh, for the petition, um, they, the members of the Supreme Court, uh, several of the members were made, uh, made questions that, uh, or asked questions that were very direct and pointed toward the uh, petitioners. Uh, there was uh, one comment from one of the justice, justices who said the, the language in the petition seemed to be uh, at best sloppy, <coughs> at worst misleading. And so those were obviously not comments you'd like to hear from one of the justices. Um, however, uh, many people think because of that that the petition uh, will be denied and, and so there won't be a vote. Um, I have. I, when I was a young lawyer, I thought I could predict what a court will do. I no longer believe that. So I do not have a prediction about what the Supreme Court will do. Uh, therefore, we're still up in the air about uh, what will happen with the petition. Obviously, if the court rules the, the ballot title is defective, then I believe uh, there's 30 days to correct that, uh, but that uh, would usually mean that the, the, the initiative petition won't go forward. Uh, it's still possible. And if it does move forward, then there is still the election to be had, of course, in November, and we'll see uh, how that goes. So that, that uh, is still up in the air. I wish it was decided by now because, obviously, our budget, as we've talked about now since May, there's the, the biggest item in our budget, personnel costs are... Uh, there are some things we'd like to do if we if we know that that uh, petition will not be successful, but we'll have to wait a little bit longer to determine that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm sorry, Chair Youngblood, if there are no questions, that concludes the President's report. <laughs>